So listen, come on in. Come on in here. Let's get, let's get inside the jungle here, man. We don't want to stay on the outside. Let's get inside the. The grass is always greener on the inside of the fence. All right. So, if you're looking, we're at multiple stages here. If you look at the rows on the left and the right, they've been topped. Come on in here. Y'all get pictures with them and stuff. I told you if you break a plant leaf, it is what it is. Don't be afraid to touch them. Don't be afraid to, to, to feel it. All right. I'll be gentler, I promise. Yeah. All right. So, listen. Everything on this side and this side has been topped, okay? The other stuff has not been topped. Yeah. Because of the hurricane, you'll see all these stalks are leaning. You notice how they're leaning? They've been blown over. The plant straightens itself back out, but the stalk's still that way. If we go into there to start topping those right now, we're probably going to damage a lot of leaves. So we're probably not going to top those, okay? We'll probably just top these the rows that we can get to without breaking them. All right. Now, you know who's going to be real happy that we're not topping those? The bees that make the FSG honey. No, we sell the honey. If anybody's never had our FSG honey, it's amazing. It comes from that neighbor right over there on the other side of those trees. He's a minister, has a bunch of bees. One year, we, we, we couldn't get into that field. It was too wet. It was muddy out. So when we were done harvesting, we just left the tobacco and there's just flowers everywhere. He goes, Jeff, man, my bees are making honey like they've never made before. He goes, they love these flowers. And it's, he goes, the tobacco of honey is amazing. I said, well, that's pretty cool. I said, what do you do with it? Oh, I sell it on Facebook Marketplace or whatever. He had a little sign up front. I said, I tell you what, just whatever you sell it for on Facebook, I'll buy it all and I'll sell it through the stores. He's like, you serious? Yeah. So now he's the honey guy. How great is that? Yeah, it's cool. It's really good, too. Everybody would say so. It's like amazing honey. Can we get that at uh, Corona? Yeah. I, I hope Tampa has it. They, they tend to run out a lot. <laughs> but, Do flowers have a scent? Yes. Okay. So right now, it's cool out. If it's hot out, especially the spring crop, man, this thing has an aroma. You walk into this field, it's like, boom, it's popping. You can smell it. It's really amazing. It's, but it's not a tobacco smell. No, it's sort of a sweet vegetal smell. It's, it's really cool. When it's cold out, it, it's cold for Florida right now. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't have that. So, so real quick, I want to show you something. I want you guys to pick a couple leaves before we walk out there because it's really a neat experience to pop a leaf, okay? Mm -hmm. This leaf is ready to go. Those two are. I want you to pop them. Listen, just, I'm gonna, you, here, I'll pop this one. Look, you go like this. Did you hear how it went pop? This one right here, sir? Yeah. There you go. That snapping sound is like music because that's when you're, when you're, when you know when you're ready. You, when you know you're ready. Here's the thing. When tobacco's not ready, it'll kind of hold on to it. Yeah. It'll have, it'll have, it doesn't snap. It'll have a piece of the stalk to it. The way that thing just went pop, it's ready to go. So why don't everybody grab a couple big leaves We'll get to that tobacco curing barn before we gotta move on out. Make sure they're big. Here's listen. If this was your first day on the job, here's what we tell you: elbow to fingertip. If it's not longer than your elbow to the fingertip, it's too short. You start at the bottom. We go through these fields eight times. Always first priming from the bottom. Second priming the next week. Third priming the next week. That's why it's an eight eight week process. All right, so. You're inside the curing barn, but I'm gonna, while we're in the shade, we'll tell you, I gave you one of those little microscopic seeds earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So those seeds are inside this pod on this flower, okay? So when this flower dies and dries out, it'll be the size, same size, right? Mm -hmm. But inside this one little flower, mm -hmm. we'll have like tens of thousands of seeds, just the one. And each plant, if you leave it alone and don't top it, it'll have like a big bouquet. So tobacco is unbelievable how many seeds it makes. Millions but of seeds. But you don't use that. You don't like Well, the only reason I don't, you can, but I don't have to because I have, still have, mm. when, if I get an aspirin bottle full of seeds, that's enough to last me 10 years. There's really? A gazillion of them in So there. Yeah. how does that cost? How much does that cost? When you're friends, you just kind of. Say, so here, have a, have farmers. a bottle. We, uh, listen, farmers. You need some aspirin. No, farmers help each other. That's honestly. Okay. So like, here, try this. Huh? So anyway, that's so. Now we're in the curing barn. So the process, we, we start picking the tobacco, put them in the bins, bring them in. 
Now these machines behind you, these actually came from Connecticut. Remember I told you the Connecticut farmer's going out of business? The happiest day of this guy's life was probably when I bought these machines off of him because they, they're, they're, no, one has, no one uses them anymore. So I brought these down from Connecticut. That's how they sow Connecticut shade. Our tobacco is called primed, meaning we take one leaf at a time. It's super labor intensive. And, and that's how they do it in, in other countries. When you smoke a broadleaf cigar, it's stalk cut, okay? Burley tobacco from Kentucky is stalk cut. What does that mean? Well, first off, the word broadleaf means just what it says. Tobacco leaf for broadleaf is like that long, okay? When you chop the plant down, you hit it with a, like an ax, and they take the stalk, they spear it, they hang it up. They can take a crew of laborers and clean out a field in a day. For us, it'll take eight weeks. Because if you looked at the plant, there's little leaves on the top, big ones on the bottom. You got it, the Cuban seed tobacco and Connecticut shade tobacco does not grow uniformly. It's big at the bottom like a Christmas tree. You pick the bottom ones, you go the next week, you go up a little, next week you go up a little. And so you do that eight, nine weeks, work your way up the stalk. Position on the stalk makes a big difference too. These are our very first primings. Each week when we fill each, what we call bay in this barn, first priming, second priming, third priming, fourth priming. Three months later, when the tobacco is cured and we're packing it, we mark the boxes as well. First priming, second, so they know. For example, like 20 acre farm and stuff from Drew Estate uses our filler. That filler is gonna come from the top part of the plant. The wrapper that you're smoking on the American usually is coming from the first through third primings. Why? The leaves are more elastic. The top leaves are real thick. It's like the old guy that works in the sun all the time, this leathery skin. Person never seen sunlight has real thin skin. <laughs> Same thing with tobacco. The stuff that's at the top, getting all the sun, that's the lajero. It's a strong stuff, real oily, heavy. Does not make good wrapper though, because it doesn't stretch well, okay? So, these leaves, at, here's the funny part. Right now when you look at them, 100% of it's wrapper. None of those have holes in them. None of them have spots. None of them have tears. By the time Drew goes through that with his crew, only half of it will be. We're gonna break some of it hanging it up. We're gonna break some of it packing it up. They're gonna break some of it unpacking it. It's just how it goes. Tobacco's fragile. You all see, experience that, people that put your hand through it. Tobacco's fragile. And guess what? It's fragile from this point all the way to the roller that you saw. Let me tell you, that's where they really get pissed off when they run a factory and you get somebody that doesn't stretch the wrappers right. Because if you don't stretch your wrapper right, the tobacco, the, the cigar looks ugly. Because the wrap, the wrapper when it's not stretched right, it, it has, it's veiny, it's lumpy, the wrapper's not shiny. If they're a good roller, they'll stretch that thing, it'll be shiny, it'll be perfect. It's like magic. That's why most women do the rolling. Because they, they have better, a, a better feel to stretch your wrapper without breaking it. So the problem is, is when you break it on the rolling table, they've already paid big money for that tobacco and it's gone through the whole process. At this point, if we break it, it can still be filler, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the process. So we're gonna sew, them, sew it up, put them on the lathes. All this stuff is from the 1950s, by the way, just like the machines and the Newmans. This stuff was made in Switzerland and uh, still works great to this day. Fortunately, I have a mechanical background because I'm the guy that has to fix them too. <laughs> and I know how to use them. The biggest problem about being running on one of these farms is you have to train each crop people how to do this. And it's a skilled job. So uh, Monday and Tuesday, I'll probably be in here training people. But once I get some good people going, I might have to go through four or five, because sometimes, you know, people can't handle it. Their back hurts or whatever, they can't, but anyway, you get through it, you work through it, right? So, so that's the process. All right, time's a ticking. I wanna show you the final product real quick. After this here, it, huh? Can you sew one? Would you, would you like me to sew one? Yeah, I would like you to sew one. All right. So My wife started. wants to put me on the spot. Uh -oh. All right. That's quite interesting to you. Just to show you that I know how to do this. <laughs> I'm probably the only retailer and cigar guy in the world that actually knows how to do this. Because most of the farming guys that do it, it's a lost art, man. So we take up in Connecticut, 
Connecticut's fancy. They call this a lathe. Here in Claremont, we call it a stick. So we take that stick, we take the string, we're gonna thread it on this machine. And this, by the way, takes some skill. And we're gonna start sewing. And there's a rhythm you get into. And if you're good, real good, you'll do 48 leaves on a stick without a problem. Your machine won't bind up. Your finger won't get stuck in the machine. You'll have a good day. So this is what it's, now normally in a big, like, like when Connecticut was really humming along, growing millions of pounds of tobacco, you'd go into a barn like this and they'd have about 40 people working. There'd be two people on this machine, one on each side. And then you'd have what's called a leafer whose job is to bring this sower the leaves. And these leaves have to be stacked like laundry. Because if not, when you pick them up, the other ones fall, fall all over the place. Now, if I'd have hit every one of those, I'd have got 48 leaves. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. I missed some. Okay. I didn't skip them. I missed them. It's my first day, it's my first day in six months. <laughs> all right? I'm training. But once you're good and you really watch... The women in Connecticut that did this, God, they were so good and fast. I mean, they haul ass. And then you're done. And there's your stick of tobacco, okay? Woo! That's awesome! So that's... Huh? So here's the thing. When you do this, the hard part is when you're training somebody, and you said I missed some, a lot of times people get nervous and they'll try and... That, well, not only that, but they'll, they'll, they'll put it in too late and it jams the machine and it breaks it. Then I got to go in there and fix it, and the parts are hard to find now, and it and it's, it's, takes a lot of time to fix them. You can't find them on Amazon. Amazon? You kidding me? So let me give you a quick story about the parts. This machine right here, Swiss guy made it. His son is the guy that I get the parts from. Last time I ordered parts was on his birthday, and he hadn't had a customer in five years. I just called him for some parts last six months ago and his daughter answers the phone she goes Hans had a stroke he can't talk but I'm with him right now and I said so just tell me what he needs and uh anyway it's sad These, yeah I see you're getting emotional yeah. so anyway <laughs> all right <laughs> Your is just yes yeah we'll try all right let's go look at the rest of the tobacco so if anybody's been to our stores and had the Florida Sun Grown Farm Rolls, they got a green band on it, okay? We call them a farm roll because it's tobacco from the farm that's just been aged. We do a lot of single barrel bourbons, so we have lots of barrels. So we pack them in the barrels. I'll leave them in there for two to three years. Rotate them out. So next crop, some of those are empty over there. We'll repack them. So we go through about three, four barrels a year, making what we call farm rolls. So, all right, so grab your, I want you to guys take a hand, there's two hands there, there's another one there. Literally, the tobacco's moist, you can touch it, it won't break. All right, was anybody here? Was anybody here for the barn smoker with Drew Estate earlier this year? So Kevin, so this is that tobacco, okay? So it's cured, it's in a barrel. Smell it, touch it. This, so here's how it works. When we do a farm roll, we use a local Cuban guy who lives here in Orlando. He makes the Finca Santa Fe cigars, Z. So anyway, he does our farm rolls. Oh, wow. We pull wrapper, binder, filler. When you do a farm roll, it's 100% FSG tobacco. So if you want to know what FSG tobacco tastes like on its own, you got to smoke a farm roll because there's nothing else in it other than tobacco from here. Okay. So also, also the most expensive cigar for us tobacco-wise. 
but we don't charge a lot for it. The mold that grows on it, the penicillin, is that, uh, is that just part of the fermentation, right? Well, but because tobacco's moist, you get some of that on there. If you noticed, this was funny. I got cases of, of uh, acephal alcohol, right? Before we pack it to go to Nicaragua, we'll spray it too. During COVID, no one could find alcohol. I had cases of that stuff. I literally had customers saying, Jeff, man, can you sell me some alcohol? So I was the rubbing alcohol guy during COVID. So anyway, yeah. So listen, God works in mysterious ways. So, so anyway, so yeah, if there's any trace, because tobacco can get moldy on the stems and the tips. That's where it tends to do it. Yeah. But if it does that, we'll spray it. And we send it in a refrigerated container, by the way. Freeze. Not to freeze it. To keep it from, because if you send it moist, it can, it, no, it can mold up on you on a right. ship. Right. And when you get mold, you lose, the, you know, we don't get paid for that. Yeah. So when, it, when we offload, when this thing's full of cartons, it goes into a refrigerated one all the way to Nicaragua. So, so anyway, that's the final product. That's awesome. All right? I hope you all learned something. We yeah. learned a lot. Right? One or two things. Okay. Wow. You got one more lesson. Uh -oh. How to push your bus out of the sand. <laughs>